Hello all, today we'll be discussing about DB scan algorithm. So the full form of DB scan is something called as density based spatial clustering on application with noise. Uh, don't worry about so big full form of this particular topic, but it is a very easy topic to understand machine learning algorithm. So DB scan algorithm is one of the most un, uh, better unsupervised machine learning technique, uh, which sometimes performs better than k-means clustering and higher mean clustering. But it has its own advantages and disadvantages, which we'll be discussing at the last uh, in this particular video. So make sure you watch this particular video till the end because I've explained I've explained the both intuition part and the implementation part with the help of Python and Scalar and how you can actually implement this particular algorithm. Uh, to begin with, guys, uh, the most important thing over here is that it has four important components. One is something called as epsilon. Okay, epsilon. The second component is something called as minimum points. Then you have something called as core points. Then you have something called as border points and you have something called as noise points. So as you know that DB scan is an unsupervised machine learning technique. So basically an unsupervised machine learning technique, it happens in such a way that it works in such a way that whenever we have some data points populated in a particular graph, it may be two dimensional or three dimension. What we do in unsupervised machine learning technique is that we try to make up clusters, you know, clusters helps you to find out the most similar points in a distribution. And based on that particular clusters, you know, whenever a new point comes, like for the next uh, test data, whenever I get a new data, and if I try to populate that point, whichever cluster that particular point will fall into, I'll consider that all that point falling into that particular group. So that is how a clustering algorithm works. I've already created videos on k-means clustering and hierarchical mean clustering. If you're interested, you can go and have a look onto that. But we'll try to understand how does density-based spatial clustering works. And this is included with noise, okay? Now, first of all, what we do is that we will be having initial points. So this will be basically all, all our points. So what we do is that we initially consider some epsilon value and some minimum points value. So suppose if I'm considering over here as minimum value, minimum points as four, and suppose I say that my epsilon value is something, okay, like three, four, it depends on the distance. Now the epsilon value indicates very important thing. That basically indicates is that, suppose this is my point A, okay. Now what does epsilon indicates that I have to take the radius of that particular value of epsilon, okay, and then I have to create a circular path across it. That is, uh, I have to create a circular boundary across it of that particular radius. So this is my radius, okay. Now, when I create this particular radius, the next, the next component that is minimum points comes into existence. Now this epsilon will be based, based on like within this point, I have to minimally consider, I mean, I have to consider a minimum number of points of four points in this. So if I, if I have four points like this, which is populated within this, then what happens is that I will be considering this point A as my core point. So very important thing to understand that to make a point considered as a core point, there should be two conditions that has to be, you know, uh, that uh, there should be two conditions that it has to follow. One is that I have to consider a boundary with the radius of epsilon value. Then the next thing is that I have to also consider that the minimum number of points that fall within this boundary should be less than or equal to four in this particular case, right? Sorry, it should be at least four points should be following in this particular thing right or if it is greater than four point it is well and good but at least four points you know at least four points should be following in this particular uh, boundary then only i'll be considering this a point as my core point so my next component that i was discussing about is something called as core point now there is also something called as border point a border point indicates something now suppose i have a point c okay now i'll be using my epsilon value and creating my epsilon value right I'll be creating that uh, radius and with respect to that, I'll be creating my boundary. Now this particular C point, suppose it does not satisfy the minimum points is equal to four. Okay. It does not satisfy this minimum points is equal to four, but we have at least one core point present inside this particular boundary. Okay. Now just understand this guys, two condition. First of all, I have drawn the boundary with the help of epsilon. The second condition is that this minimum points is not getting fixed. I, that basically means I don't have that many minimum number of points that I've actually initialized in this, but I have one, at least one core boundary inside it. So when I have this one core boundary inside it, then this points actually becomes a bound border points. 
so this point actually become a border point now three things guys first of all i we need to understand what is epsilon with the help of epsilon i'm creating the boundary second condition is that i have to consider that minimum number of points up has to be present within that boundary then only i'll be able to consider this point as my core point okay if it is not falling then what do we do is that we consider another scenario wherein we consider that at least one core point should be falling inside this boundary if one core points core points basically means this kind of point if it falls inside this boundary then i will be considering this as my border point okay now the next thing is that suppose if i have one point like b now i have uh, taken the epsilon radius i have created my boundary now what if none of this is getting satisfied if i don't have this minimum number of points as 4 and if i don't have any core points if i don't have any core points then this point basically becomes a noise point noise point is basically like my outlier now this outlier is being very nicely handled by db scan algorithm that basically means that whenever it finds an outlier it will never draw this kind of boundary across it you know so it will just skip that noise point and it will never treat it as a separate group or cluster but whereas in the case of border point and whereas in the case of core point it will be considering this kind of circular borders or boundaries or this is just like treated like a clusters you know this is like a cluster now you see this let us see this particular example that i have i have red points over here you can see this this red point basically indicates that if i am considering a epsilon value of some value and if i am considering minimum points as 4 now suppose if i consider this i have drawn i have taken an epsilon length over here as my radius i have drawn a circle now i'll go and see that at least four points are falling inside this circle so i have 1 2 3 and 4 so four points are actually falling inside this circle so i can consider this as my core point so this all red points that you see is basically my core points okay now suppose tomorrow after my model is getting trained if i if i if i if a new point comes over here then this is basically treated as the point that belongs to this particular cluster where my core point is this similarly with respect to all the other values but just now see about this particular yellow point now this yellow point when i draw a circle around it or a boundary along it i don't see more than two points over here i have just one and two right and this particular point if it is considered as a core point then this basically becomes my yellow border point so yellow which is my border point over here so similarly in this case this also becomes a border point because i have at least one core point within this particular boundary of the yellow point now this is how it is actually used you know this whole db algorithm db scan algorithm works in this way it goes from one point to other it tries to find out this particular value whether it it has that particular it, it tries to create the you know uh, it tries to create the um diameter of this particular radius that is of my epsilon value and then what happens is that after that it 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 tries to then create you know or try to find out the necessary core points in this by satisfying both these conditions and then it classifies itself as a core point or a yellow border point and wherever a yellow border point or a core core i mean not ye this yellow is basically the color so i'm saying yellow border points but when i see a core point i will be trying to create a cluster when i see a yellow point i'll be trying to create a cluster but whenever i find out a noisy point i don't create a cluster so this db scan algorithm works very well with the noisy points because noisy points are, are never taken into a cluster so it basically skips or it does not take care of those noisy points so db scan algorithm works well with the noisy point and this was an example of this guys let me just go to the next slide and show you some more things about this like how the classification happens you know in the left side in the left side of the image that you see this grouping has been done by some other algorithm like k means okay and hierarchical mean hierarchical clustering okay k means clustering and hierarchical mean clustering whereas in the right hand side of the graph you can see that it is this whole clusters has been happened with db scan this was some of the disadvantages in k means and hierarchical mean clustering because when our data is actually distributed as you know that in k mean clustering what we do is that we may try to make clusters of points right based on euclidean distance hierarchical mean clustering again there is a euclidean distance again we follow something called as you know our top to bottom hierarchy to actually solve that 
and uh, Similarly, in DB scan algorithm, we have actually discussed about this, right? In DB scan, you can see that it has been able to group the points very nicely. And you see this, this particular points are not grouped because these all are noisy points. These are left like that. See this, these are all left like that, you know? These all are left like that. This, these all points are left like that. But whereas the other point that you can see that it has been classified or grouped very nicely. So that is the advantage of DB scan algorithm. It works very well with the noisy data. Right, it works well with the noisy data. Now, as we go ahead, guys, uh, I'll also show you some of the advantages of DB scan. So, it is very great at separating clusters of high density. So, it focuses on high density of points because we are considering two things that is, that epsilon and the minimum points that should follow within the boundary of that. And uh, it, uh, so, it, 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 it is very great at separating clusters of high density versus cluster of low density. Uh, and it also defines, well defines the noisy points. And it is also great with handling outliers, which are also my noisy points within the data set. Some of the disadvantages are, it does not work well with dealing with clusters of varying densities, because suppose if I have some extreme dense density in my clusters, and if I have less number of dense clusters, so all this kind of style, uh, the DB scan will not work well, okay? So it also struggles with high dimensionality of data, because uh, as the number of dimension increases, it becomes very, very difficult for grouping the data altogether by using this particular density clustering. So, uh, so let us let us go and just understand how we can implement a DB scan algorithm because I'm just going to show you a very good use case wherein we'll try to apply DB scan algorithm. In order to apply DB scan algorithm, guys, we will be using a library that is present inside Scilearn dot cluster dot db scan. So let me just go ahead over here. You can see that we have epsilon value. We have minimum samples. We have metric Euclidean distance, you know, and this minimum samples is basically indicating your uh, minimum points, you know, and uh, based on the Euclidean, dis Euclidean distance, it can consider again, there are two types of metric that we can use either Euclidean distance or uh, we can also use Manhattan distance. It is up to you. Okay and how well it works with respect to this particular data. So let me just show you a very good example uh, that I have for DB scan algorithm. I have a data set which is called as mall customer dot CSV. Okay, now let me just show you the data set. Now this particular data set, you can see that I have a lot of information like customer ID, uh, gen, genre or gender, sorry, it should be gender, it is written as genre. Then we have age, then we have annual income, then we have spending scope. Now what our aim should be that, uh, I just uh, created this problem statement that I'm going to consider annual income and spending score. Taking these two features, I'll just apply a DB scan algorithm and based on the density of the points, it will try to group these particular points together. Okay, so let, let us go ahead and try to see it. So what I have done is that I've just taken my third and fourth uh, column, which is my annual income and spending score. So this is my third and fourth column. Um, and I've basically used uh, data set oil lock so as usual, uh, let me just open a notepad and let me just write down the steps for you all. So the first step is as usual, let me just make the font size a little bit better and bold 16. So let us, let us do it. the first step as usual is basically to import the data set. Uh, and guys, this is a unsupervised machine learning technique. So you don't have any output in this feature. You just have independent feature. And finding the similarity in the feature, what we do is that we try to, uh, based on the density scan algorithm, we'll try to group those into clusters. Okay. So after importing the data set, we'll just, uh, and I have my in independent features over here in my X, then I will be just applying my DB scan algorithm. Now DB scan, basically, uh, you know, I have to import, import the DB scan algorithm. So as usual, DB scan algorithm is getting imported, import the DB scan. Uh, from sklearn, right? So I'll just write it down so that you will always be able to remember the steps. Now you can see that we have uh, taken the DB scan, uh, you know, imported the DB scan from sklearn.cluster, and over here DB scan I've taken as epsilon value as three. You know what is epsilon? With with the help of which I'll be actually creating, you know, a radius, and based on that I'll be creating, I, I'll be considering epsilon as my radius and creating a boundary around that particular point. And uh, the minimum number of samples, I'm just considering it as four to in order to just show you how it will work. Now, this is working. Now you can see that my DB scan has worked properly over here. It has got executed. Now the next thing is that I'll be fitting the model, you know? So as usual, my third step is basically 
fitting the model you know that basically means that my training will start over here now this is fine done as soon as i do this after doing the fit if i say model dot labels i'll automatically get all the labels you can see that now my labels is like this now from the labels that basically means that how many clusters or groups i'm getting it okay now you can see that over here there are a lot of values which will have minus one now can you just imagine what this minus one will be okay so there are one zeros minus one you can see one over here two three four five six seven eight and remaining all are ones okay so zero to one um i have a lot of this understand this minus one basically indicates that these points are the outliers okay and it they do not fall in any of the clusters whereas other points you can see that it is starting from zeros then ones then these are basically my zero cluster first cluster two cluster so many groups of clusters are there now what i'll do is that i will try to find out how many unique groups are there okay so for that first of all i'll just uh, i'll just create a array uh, uh, array by using numpy where i will consider everything as false so this is the code to do that you have everything as false right now then what i'll do i'll compare this sample underscore cores and labels and wherever these label values are true so suppose if i just write db dot core underscore sample underscore indices this basically indicates that on which all index which all index i'm having a different value i'm having a different value which is like a, a group you know apart from minus one okay so what i do is that i'll take all these indexes and i'll make it as true because this basically indicates that this many from the sample underscore code whichever all false remaining all are basically my groups different different groups so you can see that all the true values are there then i'll just calculate the number of clusters if i do that i just use that length length of set of labels minus this you can see that my total number of clusters are nine I'll not be considering minus one as my cluster because minus one is the noisy points. The total number of cluster I had from zero to eight. So zero to eight is basically my nine clusters. These are my nine clusters. Then I can also see my score, which is called as Silhouette score, which I use it with respect to my X and labels based on the number of. Sorry, I did not import this SQL on the metrics. And this score will be getting calculated based on the average mean of. the number of points that are indicated as noisy and when compared to the other points that are basically indicated as group cluster now this is a, a very uh, good algorithm when you when you want to basically divide or divide the data set or cluster the data set based on density uh, i hope you like this particular video guys all you have to do is that like share comment uh, please put your valuable comments or just like it if you like this particular video um uh, make sure you share this but with all your friends whoever require it and this is how a db scan algorithm will be done i'll be uploading this code in my github so you can see that particular github url in the description and don't forget to subscribe to the channel i'll come up with more interesting content i'll see you all in the next video till then have a great day uh never give up keep on learning thank you one and all i'll see you all in the next video.